I want to talk about how many games this Lions team can actually win because recently I did a preview and breakdown of the Detroit Lions 2020 roster. I did a record prediction for the Detroit Lions. I said that this is a nine-win team. And looking back, I kind of regret it just slightly because I think this team is about more of an eight-win team more so than a nine-win team, but I definitely think this team can actually win nine games. I really do think that that's possible. The reason why I kind of push back a little bit is because the defense last year was the 31st ranked total defense, and while this defense should be improved, no doubt, and Patricia, he do, he does need to step it up as far as his defensive guru-ness, quote-unquote, you know, his job as, de- as the defensive guy, being this defensive guru, you're, you're starting from the bottom. You know, you need to kind of build your way up, and I think Trey Flowers can play, but outside of Trey Flowers, I don't see a ton of elite pass rushers on this team, and Trey Flowers is not even an elite pass rusher, in my opinion, either, okay? So listen, you know, I do think this team can make a playoff push. It's going to come down to if Stafford can play MVP-level football. I like Stafford. I think that you guys have some good running backs, very good wide receivers. I think the secondary will be above average, no doubt. And like, like, like we mentioned earlier, last year, this Lions team lost eight games by one possession. And they had the Kansas City Chiefs, the defending Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, by the ropes. They could have beaten the Packers both times. You know, these were some real close games. So I want to get your thoughts on how many games this Lions team should win and what are your expectations for the team. And I'm going to rattle off a couple teams that I think that are just clearly better than the Lions and teams that I think that the Lions are just as good as or have the, t- have the potential to be better than, okay? But, but before I get into the, the record and things like that, I think Tampa, Green Bay, New Orleans, Seattle, San Fran, and Philly, that's, that's six teams in the NFC that are, clear, that are clearly better than the Lions, that have better players. I look at these other couple teams. I think the Lions are in the category with the Cowboys, the Cardinals, the Vikings, and the Rams for some teams that could be competing for playoff spots. Not saying these teams are going to make the playoffs. One of these teams is going to make the playoffs because there's an extra spot. But I think that Detroit will be in that category for competing for a wild card spot. Don't think they win the division this year. We'll get to that very brief. We'll, we'll get to that briefly, you know, for our final topic. But what are your thoughts on how this Lions team is going to fare in in 2020? Yeah, so I agree with everything you said. And to be honest, I don't know where my expectations are. You know, like. As a Lions fan, you cannot put your expectations that high because they will fail you. You know, we have not won a playoff game in 25 or 26 years. Like, it, it's just the fact of the matter. But I definitely think we have a chance to make the playoffs. I agree with all the teams you said that were better than the Lions. And who knows? Maybe those teams has a really down year. You know, injury could happen. You never know. One of them, we just don't know. So I think one of those teams could fall off, and one might not fall off, you know. It, we never know. It's the NFL. There's a whole bunch of parody in the NFL. Um, and then I agree with the category the Lions are in, with the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys might be a little bit better than us. I think we, we play the Cardinals again, actually, this year, so we're going to want some revenge for that game. We blew it to them last year when we tied. Now the Cardinals are going to be much improved, so that'll be a tough game. Um but yes, the keys to our success this year are going to be the front seven in Stafford. And I'm very confident in Stafford, but it's going to take a heck of a season. I mean, it is going to take an MVP season. Not win the MVP, but, you know, be in the discussion to carry us to the playoffs. And the front seven is really, it, if the front seven's bad, we might win like seven games, six games in that category. If the front seven is good and plays a little bit better than, what they look like on paper, then we could be talking about, you know, a nine win and shoot. I mean, I haven't looked at our schedule. I'm going to be completely honest. I have not really looked at our schedule that, that much. Okay. Uh, probably an L on my part, but it's all good. Um, we have a last place schedule, you know, like how the NFL does it. If you come in last place in your division, you, you get an easier schedule. So I think that's really going to help us. Um, and like you said, the defense was ranked 31st last year and then 32nd against the pass. It's going to be about that pass rush, man. Like Trey Flowers, he, he really started heating up last year. I think he finished with like six and a half sacks or something. I could be wrong on that. Uh, but he started heating up. We drafted that pass rusher, Aquara, 
Like, we have a core of the brother who's not bad, but we're going to need to start blitzing a lot more. I think Gerard Davis, our uh, middle linebacker, is a really good blitzer, and I think we found that out at the end of last year. So I really hope we start rushing him more. Um, so, yeah, I mean, honestly, dude, we could be a we, – we're like one of those teams where we could go anywhere from 10 and 6 to, like, 6 and 10. Like, we're in a wide array of records we could possibly have, you know? So, I don't want to put a whole lot of expectations on the team. I'm not going to come out here here and say, we're winning 12 games, because that's just not going to happen. But I'm not going to come out here and say, you know, we're going 6 and 10, because I think we're definitely better than that. So, we definitely have a chance to make the playoffs, um, and I really hope we do. With that, that 7th spot really, really helps us. Um, that extra wild card or whatever the heck they gave the conferences, I forget. But uh, I really do hope we can make the playoffs. And I think we have a legit shot if we can stay healthy. Yeah, I think you're calmly optimistic, which is actually a very good approach for being a Detroit Lions fan. No offense. Now, how do you think the NFC North is going to shape out? I've already done my preview and breakdowns for each team. I agree, Bay Wing, 11 games. I think that for, for my Packers, you know, I don't know for a great team, you know, because we kind of got some breaks last year. You know, we kind of overachieved, in my opinion. But I still think we're a good team. You know, Aaron Rodgers can still play at an MVP level, in my opinion. We've got three really good running backs. Now that we drafted A.J. Dillon, you know, I think that we're going to be more of a run team, which is actually, in my opinion, not that bad of a thing because we just saw Tennessee nearly run Derrick Henry to the Super Bowl. We just saw Jimmy G in the Super Bowl buying a great running game. And if Aaron Rodgers plays like Aaron Rodgers, you know, I think we can be a good team, you know. So I think that the defense will be solid this year. You know, we have a very solid team, well-rounded team, 11-win team probably, even though we have a tough schedule. I actually have your Detroit Lions at number two. I think that you're got, you guys are about eight to nine-win team, you know, based on the things I've mentioned in all these episodes. I think Minnesota's talented, but I think they lose a lot of key players. You know, they lost a ton of, ton of players on that defense. They lost some key players on offense. And while Mike Zimmer is a very good underrated coach, and I think Kirk Cousins is underrated, I think that they're going to be relying on a lot of young players with not a very normal offseason for those young players to, you know, be brought upon and really nurtured and groomed because you're not going to need preseason games. And you're throwing out Jeff Gladney versus Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers week number one. Good luck, okay? And Chicago, not so in Chicago. Bad offensive line, below average weapons in my opinion. I don't believe in their quarterbacks, you know. I understand that Nick Foles is a good quarterback, but... Well, I think Foles is the average quarterback. I'm not going to call him a good quarterback because outside of Philadelphia, he's virtually done nothing. You know, he he was a below 500 quarterback in with the Rams. He didn't do much with the Chiefs. And outside of Philly, I don't think that he fits in with a whole lot of teams, you know. So that's how I feel about the NFC North this year. How do you feel the NFC North is going to shape out? You know, I got Packers 1, Lions 2, maybe a playoff team potentially. Um, Vikings 3. And Bears four. Yeah, yeah, I, I can really see that playing out. Uh, I think you can really swap Lions and Vikings either way you look at it. I think as of right now, Packers are definitely the uh, leader of the NFC North. I mean, they got the best quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I hate Aaron Rodgers as a rival, but I love watching him play. I think he's truly special. Um, and you got the Smith. Not brothers, but the Smith guys, uh, rushing from the edge. I think they're both really good. Uh, you need pass rushers, which is something the Lions do not have, unfortunately. Um, I, I like the Packers. I think there's definitely some holes that might have been failed to address in the off season. Um, I know your thoughts are pretty clear on that. And I, I think they'll probably win it. I think there really is a possibility of, you know, trying to be optimistic here, but the Packers having a down year, I don't think it'll happen, but you really never know just because a lot of the Packers season is going to ride on Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones. Um, but I, I do think they'll win it. The Vikings, the Vikings are interesting because they were really good, but they had a lot of turnover in the offseason. I mean, they lost, I forget who all they lost, but they lost a lot of guys on that defense who were getting old, and they just let them go. They brought in a lot of new guys. They had, I believe they had the most picks in the NFL draft. 15 draft picks. 15 draft picks. I mean, it seems like they were, I mean, every 
15 picks, I felt like I was watching the Vikings draft something. And I, I hate to say it, but I loved their draft. But are those guys ready to come in day one and win a division? Uh, I don't know. You know, my thoughts, you know, my thoughts on Kirk Cousins. I really, you know, I don't love Kirk Cousins. I don't even, I wouldn't even go so far that I like him as a quarterback. You know, he, he's okay. You know, he had a really good year last year. I'm not sure if he can build off of that. Losing Diggs is going to hurt them. Adam Thielen is still really good. Uh, definitely a top uh, 11 receiver in the league. But I think, I think they'll, the Vikings will get either second or third. And unfortunately, you know, man, that Bears defense is good. But that offense is just terrible. I mean, it, it's just the truth. Trubisky, it's sad, too. I like Trubisky coming out of college. I thought he was going to be really good. I watched a lot of highlights on him. Not so much film, because I wasn't into the film yet three or three years ago, when it, whenever it was, or four years ago. But I watched a lot of highlights, and I was like, dang, this guy can make every throw in the book. And he has a good rookie season, too. And then it's just downhill from there. This guy looks scared. He refuses to push the ball downfield. He's throwing drag routes and check downs, and he's barely completing those. I don't even know if he'll be their starter this year. The old line is getting old outside of James Daniels, who they drafted a few years ago. Uh, the targets aren't great. I think Allen Robinson is a really, really good receiver, but outside of him, who you have? Tariq Cohen, he's a gadget guy. He's not a number one running back. So, unfortunately for Bears fans, I think you're wasting Khalil Mack's talents, and they'll probably get fourth. Got it, got it. I kind of agree with all the things you said. All the things that you said. Pardon me, I kind of misspoke right there. But yeah, um, thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. And I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I currently am a freshman there right now. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows, or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out. Three.